Hey what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series. This is episode number 14 and today we've got a game against Cardiff and also transfer deadline day as well. Now I did originally say I'll play games against Cardiff and Newcastle but depending on how quick transfer deadline day goes we might get to Newcastle, we might not, I'm not entirely sure. So we'll definitely play Cardiff and transfer deadline day but if transfer deadline day does take quite a while we'll probably skip Newcastle but uh, still before we get into transfer deadline day I'm going to show you what we've done through the January transfer window so far made a couple of signings sold a couple of players and also how Swansea have been getting on off camera now there have been a couple of departures from Swansea and one guy you already knew about was Kyle Bartley going to Reading. He has gone to Medeski Stadium for £500,000 and again I didn't really have much use for him so he's gone and that's totally fine with me. And also our backup goalkeeper Christopher Nortfeld has left and joined Marseille for £1 million. Um, pretty decent deal this I think for uh, for Nortfeld of course. We didn't really have much use for him. He didn't really play too many games just as a backup and deputy for Fabianski. He was never going to become number one so for a million I thought I'd take it especially because we've gone ahead and signed a goalkeeper already. So the goalkeeper we've signed is from Lazio and his name is Berisha. He's Albanian. Uh, you've probably heard the guy will be playing at the Euros. He's got some really decent stats and he came in for just £100,000. He's on a lower salary than Nortfeld was, so I've got to be honest here. He looks better than Nortfeld. He's cheaper in terms of the wages and the fee was cheaper as well. I think this is fantastic business. Now, there is a clause where if he plays 50 games, we'll have to give Lazio an extra extra £700,000 I think it is but um, no he, he looks pretty decent and uh, again it will be a backup for Lucas Fabianski so I'm I'm, I'm very happy with that piece of business there selling Nortfeld and bringing in Berisha um, the other transfer though is a big one and uh, it's it's a risky one let me show you now this guy has become my second most expensive signing as Swansea manager and his name is Marlon. He's a Brazilian centre-back and he came in for £10 million and there's a clause as well which if it gets met we'll have to pay an extra £5 million. So that would be £15 million in total for Marlon and he hasn't really started off too well here at Swansea. He's played a couple of cup games and I'll, well, I'll talk about one in just a moment's time. But I'm not entirely sure this guy's going to work out for us. I really hope he does because I wanted a new centre-back. But I'm not entirely sure I've, I've done some good business here. Because again, £10 million is a lot. And if it does meet £15 million in the future, that's an awful lot of money. You look at his stats and think, well, he looks really, really good. You know, good first touch. Heading's not too bad. Marking 15, tackling 14. Mentals are very good. Great leadership as well or at, at uh, just 21 years old. And physically, he looks like a bit of a monster. But he's on 60 grand a week. And I'm just, I'm a little bit worried about this guy because... Because if he doesn't work out for us, then we signed a player for, again, 10 to 15 million pounds. It'll turn out to be a bit of a white elephant. But if he does work out well, if this guy does grow into the player that I'm hoping he'll grow into, touch wood, then it will be an absolute bargain. Because in the future, this guy could potentially be worth absolutely tons of money. Because he's only 21 years old, already some great stats. And it seems as though he's just going to get better over time so yeah Marlon's come in and again I don't I don't know whether it'll work out for us or not but we'll have to wait and see only time will tell really whether he turns out to be a great signing for us and it was worth the money or whether he turns out to be a complete expensive flop we'll have to wait and see but he's come in I was quite surprised too because I was told his work permit would get rejected and it did initially but after a period it got accepted so anyway Marlon's in he's our new number five he's not in the first 11 just yet because Williams and uh, Williams and Amat have been fantastic but it'll be an interesting one we'll, we'll keep an eye on this guy over the course of this series. Will he turn out to be great? Will he turn out to be a flop? We'll have to wait and see. Also, I had a bid for Paul Dummett at the start of the window. For some strange reason, I stalled it and never came back to it. But um, yeah, he can he can just he can just go to, to Leeds. I don't I, I don't particularly know why I decided to sign Paul Dummett. He just I mean I don't I don't even know <laughs> why did I buy this guy? Go to Ellen Road, mate. We don't need you. Also, Wayne Routledge should be on his way to Ipswich as well. Um, we just let him go for free, really. I've I've told him basically he's not needed. I don't really get on with a guy who was useless for us last season. Didn't really do too much in the games he played. Loaned him out this year. Ipswich put in a zero pound offer. I said, please take him. I'll pay you to take him if you want. And uh, Routledge is, is going to go. So thank God for that. 
Now, right now, we've got £12 million to spend, and I am currently putting in bids for a couple of players right now. Um, but just to speed this up, I'll show you them if they come in. If they don't, I might briefly mention them, but otherwise, I'll just leave them be. But right now, the squad is fine. I like the team we've got at the moment. It's pretty decent. We're, we're, we're performing okay. And uh, off camera, as you can see, the results have looked like this. Now, the last game you would have seen was this 1-0 victory over Liverpool, a great result. Then we drew 2-2 with Villa in the Cup, so I had to go to a replay, which we won uh, a couple weeks later, which is great. So we got to a uh, got through to the fourth round but before that we beat Spurs 2-1 away what a fantastic result that was then we drew a goalless draw with QPR 0-0 uh, then we lost 1-0 to West Brom sadly so our undefeated run ended after 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 games in all competitions our best undefeated streak ever then we beat Norwich so bounced back with a 2-1 win uh, Torres with a double and then we lost to Sheffield United in the FA Cup fourth round they knocked us out uh, just like their fans knocked me out but um, yeah we lost by 3 goals to 1 this was such a disappointing game because we rested all of our players but I still thought we'd perform okay and as for Marlon it was his, 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 uh, his second game for us and he got a 6.2 and was at fault for two of the goals Sheffield United scored so this is why I'm a little bit worried about Marlon but uh, hopefully that was just one bad game and he'll put it behind him but uh, either way for Fernando Torres got to show you this as well for Fernando Torres right now his goal record is just phenomenal in the Premier League he's played 20 games and scored 12 goals bargain of the century or what I mean, that's, that's probably a bit of an overstatement. Maybe not bargain of the century, but certainly bargain of the series so far. He's just been unbelievable. And a quick look at the Premier League table as well. As you can see right now, we are in ninth place after 23 games. So 15 games to go, and we have got 35 points. So, yeah, we're doing okay. 14 points adrift of the relegation zone right now. So I don't believe Touchwood will be in a relegation zone come the end of the season. Uh, sorry, a relegation scrap coming the end of the season like last year. And I think we should be pretty safe. And if we can stay around this mid-table area, I'll call this season a relatively successful one. So it's been a good first half of the season, a good few games past that as well. 15 games to go now. Let's keep ourselves in the top half of the table. That's the objective now. Stay in the top half of the table and uh, close out the season strong. Oh, so Paul Dummett's not going to leave then. That's kind of annoying. I don't know why I signed him. To this day, I don't know why I signed him. At first, I was like, yeah, he could be all right. Good squad player, useful player. Leading player for most Sky Bet League One sides? I mean, come on. And Routledge isn't going to leave either. For goodness sake, mate. Can't you understand? I don't want to pay you 36 grand a week. You're useless. Okay, but one guy that is going to come in is Julian Brandt. Now, how about this for a signing? I intentionally kept this a, a secret from you guys. I'm really, really pleased with this. Now, last night or the night before last, you guys, I was woken up by the thunder in Manchester, which was crazy, and I couldn't go back to sleep, so I thought I'd play a bit of FM. And I agreed a deal with uh, Leverkusen of £3.3 .3 million pounds for, their Ju uh, for, their, for their Julian Brandt, uh, for Julian Brandt, their wide midfielder, because he was on the transfer list and he wanted to leave. And I cannot believe this, but not a single club came in for him. So, Brandt Brandt is going to come in for Swansea, and I must say I'm very happy with this. 20 years old, will turn 21 in May. He's already got some really good stats. I mean, for £3.3 .3 million, I literally cannot understand why no one else came in for him. He's on the transfer list, he's on the loan list. No one came in for him, and I've got literally no idea why. He looks fantastic, and unless I'm missing something, I'm not ent entirely sure why this is a bad deal in any way. So, Brandt is coming in for £3.3 .3 million, and I'll take that. I'm, I'm really pleased with that signing. That's a great way to start transfer deadline day, which means that you can can leave Wayne Routledge, right? I don't want you. Come on. I offered him a mutual termination uh, off camera as well, and he came to me and was offended. He said something like, he still believes he's got more to offer. Mate, you've offered us nothing so far, so I don't see that changing. Well, I did think this would be quite an uneventful transfer deadline day, despite the signing of Julian Brandt, but I've been scouting, and Timo Horn of FC Cone has a minimum fee release clause of £6.5 million, and I must say... This seems like a deal which I don't think I should pass up, despite the signing of Berisha and also Fabianski playing really good football as per usual between our sticks. I think this guy for £6.5 million is a deal which I can't, I can't say no to because I'm looking at his stats right here and he's only 23 years old. I don't see a negative to, to buying this guy, I really don't. He looks really, really good and even though that will give us three goalkeepers... I think he's a very, very smart signing for, for just 6.5 million pounds. You can see his release clause right here, 6.5 million, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to go ahead and match it. I guess the big negative for Horn is that we might have to give him a really, really big salary, but I'll, I'll see if I can get it down. Hello, uh, it's me. 
Uh, unfortunately, I got some bad news. Uh, I split this video up when recording it into two segments because it was going to take me quite a while and I thought that would be easy for me when editing. But for the second part of the video, I forgot to record the screen and just recorded my audio. So you can hear me talking, but you can't see what's on the screen. Sorry about that, I made a bit of an error. But what I am going to do is uh, show you the highlights of the Cardiff game and sync up the audio so it looks like you're watching it live when in actual fact it's just the highlights but you can hear my live sort of reactions and that. And uh, I'll try and show you some of the stuff I was talking about as well whilst not giving away stats and, and stuff like that too. But anyway, if, if you watch the next part of the episode and you see a couple of things and think, hang on, why is that there or, or why has that happened um, before you said it or whatever, it's because I'm a complete moron and made a stupid rookie error and forgot to check before I start recording. Anyway, hope that clears it up and enjoy the rest of the episode. And so as we come into the game in today's episode, we do indeed take on Cardiff in our second Welsh derby of the season. We beat them in the reverse fixture. Now we host them at the Liberty Stadium. Right now they are rock bottom of the table with 15 games to go and only 15 points. We are in 10th and if we win tonight, we can move up to 40, uh, sorry, 38 points. Wow, my maths really is terrible. 38 points and overtake West Brom and Everton and move up to 8th place and that would be pretty decent. And we'll only be three points off the top four, so not not going to say anything, but um, hmm, yeah, worth uh, worth thinking about at least. But uh, still, this is the team I picked for the game. Uh, we changed the tactics a little bit and the formation as well, and I'll explain why too. Uh, Timo Horn will make his debut in goal, back for a Pereira, Williams, and Matt and Trippier. Further forward in a midfield four, Ayus on the left, Brant making his debut on the right, and Ben Tekir and Crane Vitter in the middle. Uh, the attacking midfielder is Gilfie Sigurdsson, and the lone striker is Fernando Torres, and the bench is Fabianski, Marlon North. Key, Lingard, Dyer, and Liam Cullen. Uh, the reason why we're playing a 4 4 1 and not a 4 4 2, which we have been playing for the majority of the season, is because Callum Wilson is just coming back to fitness from his lengthy injury, and Wilfred Bonney is away with Ivory Coast uh, during the, uh, the African Cup of Nations. So that is why uh, we're playing a 4 4 1 1, and we shall see whether we can get the win this one and move up to eighth place. That'd be fantastic. And the first highlight comes here is Julian Brandt is down the right hand side, plays it back towards Kieran Trippier. I'd love for Brandt to score or assist on his debut, but here's Gilfie Sigerson for us. Through towards Fernando Torres, starting up top in this game on his own, takes it round his man, still Torres on the ball. Oh my goodness, Fernando Torres is just an absolute gem. 15th of the season for a boy we got on a free transfer. I mean, we all know about Torres, we know how good he is, but I was a little bit worried he'd turn out to be a white elephant and be a waste of wages, just not perform on the pitch but 15 goals since arriving here in Wales absolutely fantastic lovely finish poor goalkeeping in fairness but 1-0 to Swansea Torres again starting on his own he doesn't need a strike partner he'll always find a back of the net well done son and an assist for Sigurdsson as well. And he's so much better playing further forward. This season, of course, playing the 4-4-2, the flat 4-4-2, he sits in the CM area, doesn't get as forward as much and create as much. But when he plays in that attacking midfield role, he is just so good. Nice to see him get an assist. Oh, wow, whoa, whoa, whoa. So could Timo Horn in his debut. Oh, he's through and he scored as well. Timo Horn has got a debut assist. How about that? Long ball from our new signing in goal. It was a, a missed interception from the centre-back, I think, for Cardiff. And Andre Ayu latched onto it and put it in to the back of the net. I hope that goes down as this for Timo Horn. It should do. I don't think that uh, defender got a touch there. Are you drills it into the bottom corner? 2 0 Swansea. Debut assist for Timo Horn. That's what we like to see. And now Cardiff simply have to respond with Akpom on the ball for them. Finds Matri. Can he get himself back in the game here? Matri through towards Akpom. And Matt's challenge comes towards Matri. And Timo Horn will not get a debut clean sheet as Alessandro Matri scores his first goal for Cardiff. So Cardiff hit back instantly. Horn just got an assist but then loses his clean sheet a couple minutes later. Matri in towards Akpom. The tackle was made by a Matt. Came straight back to the forward who put it in to the top corner. 2-1. Cardiff back in the game. Already half in the deficit. Sir. And here's a throw for Swansea. Can we get our two-goal cushion back here as Pereira's on the ball down left-hand side. Plays it through towards IU. has scored our second goal. Smith intercepts though. Plays it long. But there is Craneville. Always winning the ball back for us. Finds Ben Secure on the ball. Now Sigurdsson through towards Fernando. Torres on the ball for his second of the game off the post. And Manga gets it away. And there it is, final score, Swansea 2, Cardiff 1, we get the win. It wasn't as convincing as I would have liked us to have got the win, considering how strong we've been of late, and of course Cardiff rock bottom of the table, but the most important thing was that we did get the three points. I thought everyone played relatively well, so we'll, we'll praise the team, and uh, that's good to see. So man of the match was Sigurdsson with a 9.0, 
And for, for Timo Horn, a debut assist may not be a clean sheet, but a debut assist, very nice to see indeed. And we do indeed shoot up to eighth place in the table, just three points behind Spurs and Manchester United in fourth and third place. And that will end today's episode in my Football Manager series as well, guys. So a big thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to play four games off camera and I'll return for games against Manchester City and Chelsea, who are in first and second right now. And that will be the ultimate test. If we are going to qualify for a Europa League place, then we'll, we'll have to get points in those games and those will be two really tough ones so I guess that next episode could see us possibly gain momentum with the final few games or it could see us drop away from the race we'll have to wait and see but thanks for watching this episode regardless if you enjoyed it, then please do leave a like much love to you all I hope you've had a fantastic day and I'll see you for the next episode in my football manager series very soon